How's it going? It's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, it's been a good three weeks now, I think, if not four maybe, since I was last time we were fishing. Um, things have changed a bit. <laughs> in just a few weeks, I think, uh, in that last vid, I caught a codling and I was still in my uh, flotation suit. And now it's, I think it's about 11 o'clock at night at the moment, t-shirt. Uh, really struggled the last few weeks, just trying to get a bit of a window to come out fishing. Had that boat trip, of course, a couple of weeks back. That was the last video. Uh, but yeah, since then, just, just struggling to get out. Right hand rod is a whole prawn. Left hand rod has squid and ragworm. Greedy three rods as usual. There's a carp rod in the middle there. I've got a uh, sand eel and ragworm on that. You can hear a pin drop tonight. There's no wind to speak of at all. There's light cloud cover. Well, tonight's menu's a little involved. <laughs> so hopefully we can catch something so we can make a fish burger. When I say burger, it's just gonna be cooked fish in a roll. But we're gonna make our own brioche roll. Brioche from scratch on the beach and cook it in our dog bowl oven on our camping stove. And hopefully if we get some fish, we can, we can sear that or char. There's a, there's a suitable candidate. Well, at least we're off the mark. That was a really big fat pouting. <laughs> oh, do I keep him for the burger? I'm not sure. He's a good portion size, actually. I think I'm going to. Sorry. Yeah. Nom nom. <laughs> so I started to tell you then before I was interrupted by a fish. Our, uh, our friend the Poutin, who's going to be dinner tonight. <clears throat> so yeah, going to make a brioche bun. We're going to make some homemade coleslaw to go with it. We'll char grill our fish to go inside. We've got some other veg and bits and bobs to go in there as well. Okay, so we're going to start making our brioche then, ready for our burger. So it's basically, brioche is like an enriched bread dough. Uh, it's bread dough, it's made with egg, and has butter beaten into it at the end, uh, which really enriches the dough, makes it beautiful and buttery, and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put all the ingredients, as usual, in the description, so you can have a look after. So I'll just go through it, just do what I do, but all the, uh, the ingredients and quantities will be in the description. We have a bowl, flour goes in there. Then we're going to pop in a pinch of salt and we're going to crack in an egg. Okay, if I had milk, I'd be using milk. I haven't got any milk with me, so I'm just going to use a little bit of water. It doesn't really matter. If you've got milk, great. 
little splash of water. Now really, you can make brioche by hand, of course you can, you can get it, you can get in there, but it's much easier by machine. Really, you need a mixer to make brioche. When you're on a beach, you're obviously a bit limited as to what you can do as far as a mixer is concerned. So this is what I've come up with. <laughs> I'm more worried, to be honest with you, there's another angler just down that way. What the hell are they going to be thinking when it's midnight and all they can hear is someone drilling on Chesil Beach? Okay, let's go. Oh, good God. Fast acting yeast. I also forgot that. As usual, to be honest, fresh yeast, if I had it, every time I'd always use fresh yeast. I haven't. That's a lot of yeast. And again, for this much, it's a lot of yeast, but you know, we're going to get this working. Right, let's go. Light on the end as well. Look at that. Bloody brilliant. And go to speed one. Probably a little wet, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more flour. Right. I, don't, I don't know what those other people must be thinking. Oh dear. Yeah, when you make a brioche, if, if you've got a really tight, dry feeling dough, you don't want that. You want it You want it to be a pain in the backside to deal with, really. You want it to be nice and sticky, and then you know you're on the right lines. I'm just worried there's so many midges here. I'm going up with midge brioche. But... So that's the first part of the dough made. Now we're going to let that prove up. And then we're going to knock it back and then we're going to beat our butter into it. Okay, so we'll make, give that an hour or so to see how we're getting on. There we go, greedy little strap eel. Another species. Right, it's been a while now then, so it's time to have another little look at our brioche. We'll pull her out and see if it's time to add the butter. There we go. So now we're going to work in our butter. Popped it in my pocket to warm it up a bit. Just start adding the butter bit by bit. Working it into the dough. Right, take a good look at this. This is what you're after. You're after a really nice, smooth, silky dough. It should be really, really sticky, but at the same time, it's come away cleanly from the bowl. That, ladies and gentlemen, is better than I ever thought I'd get with a drill. <laughs> so I have a small tin here I've prepared. I've just lined it with some paper. So I'm gonna put my brioche inside this. Don't forget, you're looking for it to at least double in size and then it's going to grow when, it's, when you cook it as well. So you don't want to more than half fill your container.
Okay, so I got my brioche in there now. I'm just gonna put that back in the bag. I let it double in size again, and then it'll be ready to cook. A very light dust and a flour on top, just to stop it sticking to the bag. Okay, so time has come to bake our brioche. We'll check it out in a second, but I can see it through the bag and it's looking pretty good. I think it's, I think it's risen up a treat and it's ready to cook. This is gonna be the trickiest part of this whole process. Trying to maintain a decent bake temperature in a dog bowl on a camping stove with a few stones in the bottom is gonna be a bit tricky. So uh, yeah, we'll just have to try and use the force, see how we get on and just do the best we can without hopefully burning the bottom of it. So, our dog bowls like last time then. Just gonna put a layer. A layer of stones in the bottom of our dog bowl. This is gonna act as our baking medium, so they'll heat up and maintain the temperature inside the oven. So I'll get those on now. We bring it around here so you can see what's going on. See a bit of foil to go on the stove, kind of act like hopefully a bit of a trivet as well, just again to try and protect the bottom a bit. Well, you can see that's pretty cool. That's come up a treat. I'll be my little indicator in there. When I start hearing the stones start popping, that it's getting hot enough in there to cook. Yeah, she's popping away like a good one now, so uh, I think we'll get the brioche in. Well, I'm going to give that, I'm going to keep that fairly low now and give it about 10, 10 minutes or so, then checking it again. Okay, brioche is going crazy in there, that's <laughs> popping away. Uh, so I'm just going to fill it up my pout in quickly while that's, while that's cooking in there. Starting to get a bit of a bready smell now. Oh, that's looking good. Right, I'm just going to give that a few minutes on that side. Smells amazing. Okay then, to go with our burger, we're gonna make a really quick bit of beetroot coleslaw. Um, I'm gonna make my own mayonnaise to go with this, just cause uh, I don't have any at home and it's really quick and easy to do. Um, and if you're doing coleslaw or potato salad or celeriac remoulade, anything like that, homemade mayonnaise is just so much nicer. Um, you don't have to make it as thick as the shop board stuff and it just coats everything a lot better. We'll see what I mean hopefully in a minute. One egg yolk, some Dijon mustard, a bit of white wine vinegar, and vegetable oil. Just gonna do this little mix up. And while 
mix in, just add some vegetable oil. See that's starting to thicken up. A little bit more. So into our mayonnaise then, I'm going to put some sliced red onion, grated carrot, and grated beetroot. This is one of those cooked beetroots you get in the packet at the supermarket. Some seasoning, and we'll fold it all together. Inside. That smells banging. So here's our pouting fillets. Just a little thyme on there and a bit of olive oil. Ready for the char grill. So you need to make sure your grill is really, really hot. The food is nicely oiled. This fish won't take long at all to cook. I'm not going to lie to you, the fishing today has been absolutely <laughs> no good at all. But this is certainly going to make up for it. That is a banging fish burger. Bit of a weird breakfast. <laughs> Little bit of a weird breakfast. Mm. So we have a, a nice big pout in, strap eel, and the dogfish up wasn't on camera. But hey, breakfast was nice, if a little unconventional. Um, so there we go. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. If you didn't know how to make brioche before, then hopefully you do now. And you don't even have to use a drill. You can just use a kitchen mixer if you want. If you haven't already, folks, please hit the subscribe. 
hit the like button and if you do subscribe hit the notification bell as well and that way you'll actually get a notification when i put a video out so uh, all that being said hopefully i'll see you when the next video comes out cheers for watching everyone thank you very much Bye bye